like in the ice module which has got the hotkey 4 the old simulate uh, module which has been moved to control 4 it's broken down into three areas uh, particles to form and kinematics the same um, primitive and property appear as they do in the other modules uh, if I were just to do my basic emission and press play you can see I've got my floating PPG uh, and I've got my normal viewport set up if I want to switch to PPG on the right here and click on this button down here it's going to automatically uh, set my ice tree as well as my explorer here I can move this over slightly so when I double click now on these elements the compounds here I can see uh, my PPG uh, over here so it doesn't clutter up my, my view I want to create like a, a bubble effect I certainly don't need 400 uh, particles per second and uh, I can reduce uh, the number of particles as well as change it to say a sphere here so uh, if I want to create some of these bubbles I can use the the main module and just to give me a, a head start so the first is uh, inside my create I've got the basic particles I've got Lagoa particles uh, strands uh, because strands are an extension of particles I've got the also polygonizer so polygonizer so this this uh, creates a surface on top of my particle if I were to open up the script editor we can see that we've got these colored sections and this is uh, was introduced so we don't have to have sub menus so if you look at the uh, the add-on uh, because it's actually a, a factory add-on this whole all of these menus are built with a plugin so you can see how they're built and uh, obviously add to them is we have a new set background color so we can uh, delineate parts of the menu structure rather than having to do sub menus and notice they're also grayed out this basically means that you can't uh, work on a point cloud if you've already got it selected the next one would be on emission this is this whole module is really designed to uh, help artists just get get into ice so the difference is um, let's ignore the simulation route for now is the emission property so on emission will act on this compound uh, if I were to do say randomize the size you can see that it adds uh, this node in size uh, and uses a, a randomized value and I can uh, see what's going on here it's difficult to see exactly so I'm going to reduce the the number of particles again just so we can probably see a little bit better there we go we've got what a randomization here in fact I can also use randomized direction uh, sometimes known as the the spread when, particularly when you're dealing with like grid surfaces uh, because I want to create like the the bubble effect I also want to play around with the, the color um, I can do randomized color um, but this is actually going to do numbers of colors I could actually if I just wanted a single color go and add a gradient so I can see that it's adding to the color node I could explode this compound uh, I could enter the compound and see oh well the gradient node here and say do one of the presets like a, a white to transparent there um, so it helps me see uh, what's going on uh, as I work with the, the the menu structure so on emission is working uh, on this compound uh, and the good thing is is things like uh, emit from weight map the emit from geometry node is new because it's been updated again to try and uh, add some of the, the most uh, common functionality so things like emit from weight map it will now find my emitting uh, surface uh, if I hit W to apply where it's going to emit from you can now see if I were to reduce that it's now emitting just from that area in this case it's going to emit from it all again and we can see inside here it's added that weight map uh, for me directly inside the emit from geometry node if we were to look at the uh, after emission so this is actually going to go into the simulation route if I were to expand the simulation route we've got uh, quite a few sections uh, so after the emission here with the emitter the forces go in here and also the execute so if I were to do say after emission uh, delete at the age limit well I don't have an age limit so it's done a little bit of logic here it says well you don't have a set particle age limit I'm gonna add one for you and uh, this one because it's going to be uh, really after the simulation is jumping to the post simulation so it's helping me uh, to see where I should put my my nodes because here is the simulate particles node well, to look in the after emission section uh, I can see that oh I have a modifier color so if I were to, to click on that I can see oh well this is giving me my, uh, my gradient node uh, after the emission so uh, again I have a choice about which way I want to uh, control 
my particular simulation. This is just bubbles, so this is a basic one. I don't, don't really need it on that, that section. Another thing to, to notice in the after emission launch, a very cool one, is it's like a line to camera. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm working with bubbles, but this will actually add a, a new billboard compound for me. Uh, and again, it's going to find the camera in the scene and try to align to it will give me a picking session. Uh, for forces, if I were to just do, say, add a little gravity, maybe just a, a tad, it's, it's a good thing because it shows me I need an add forces node to go here in the side of forces section. So the simulation route not only um, is there to help this menu, in fact, you need it in order for this menu to work, but it's, it's saying, okay, well, if you have a force, stick it inside here. Uh, using the menu says you need an add forces node because I can have multiple forces going inside here. A little gravity, I don't need quite, I just need like minus one here, just so some of them are started to, to uh, arch back down. For, say, collisions, uh, if I were to go and grab this cube, say, I can go into my collision, and even with it selected, not with the particle selected, there is again some logic about what you have selected, what's in the ice tree. Well, this currently has got this particle simulation, so it's assuming you want to act on that. So even if I've got my collision object selected here, if I were to do flow around surface, stick to surface, bounce off there, uh, delete by volume, it's, it's going to apply it for me uh, because it says, hey, I found your simulation uh, ice tree, and I'm going to act on that. So now, anytime a particle tries to enter that volume, it's going to be deleted. And I can obviously, give, this could be animated. I've only got 100 frames going inside here. But there we see how it's, it's going around. And we've got a little uh, uh, cutoff for me, sorry. You know, so it's not a, a perfect deletion going inside here. So it's not just a, an absolute cube. Uh, I could also add, after mission, uh, you notice how when I delete that, oh, it's, something's gone red. So it's it's, uh, it's a good thing. This is just the general ice workflow. It says, ah, well, that was my delete from particles node. Uh, if we've been tracking it as an artist, I can see what's been added. And I can see, well, that was the last thing I added. I want to delete that because I no longer have my uh, cube inside the scene. Uh, for my after emission, if this is one type of sort of bubble, the, the floaty bubbles. If I had it, say, underwater, I could add, uh, in this case, I could add, say, a curl noise. Uh, if I want to just do this, this is quite a, you see how that's, I'll just add a few few more frames here, just so you can probably see it a bit. See that sort of bubbly effect. If I were to increase, say, the initial direction, so it's increasing your force, this would be like more underwater bubbles, say, in an aquarium. Uh, so I started to see what's what's working for me here. The other thing to note is inside the simulation room, now we've added a state machine. This will make it a little easier to change states. And it really is often it's just one state that you want to do. So we can go into the after emission state machine and I can start to add some of the most common triggers. So say a particle position trigger. Uh, so if I were to just uh, see this equal to, I'd rather have it greater than or equal to say six units or let's say 20 units uh, in the Y axis. But I've got no, no state change. I've just said, what's my trigger going to be? Well, it's going to be this. So I need to add my state. So my state machine, add a new state here. I'll just take the default for now, which is this green guy. So as it goes here, as it hits 20 units, it's changing that state. So it's it's really just helping me uh, in my initial foray into ICE. And this is designed for artists just to see what's going on, to give them the most common uh, workflow. So if I were to go back at any stage, just again, if I wanted to look at my, uh, say, my randomized direction, Oh, I can see this. It's actually not going to add one. It's going to try and find if I've already got one inside there and inspect it for me. So if I were to make that a little bit bigger now. So it's really trying to just to help me get started in ICE. And now I'm going to have a look at another scene just to show you a little bit more about the simulation root node. So we've got a, a little spawn on collision. This was to show this is the old state machine setup. Now, if you right-click on the simulation, uh, sorry, the ice tree to see the simulation route menu item, if you do insert simulation route, it's going to do its best guess to try and uh, reconnect everything for you so that you can now use the uh, module menu uh, because it needs this simulation route node. Now, uh, the simulation is designed for particles, so if you don't have an emit node going straight into the ice tree, it's probably going to uh, have a little bit of a hard time. You notice it ignores the state machines because we've changed them in the simulation root node. Having this plugged in, uh, maybe if I were to just go here and plug it directly in inside my uh, execute, it might work. So uh, notice also I can actually go backwards now. That's a little little addition. 
So I can add it into my execute node. I could have done it post. It was left to uh, for the user to be able to design uh, their own uh, state machine workflow given there's a new one inside the simulation route. So just plug into execute should work like this, but it was left alone in this case. Um, uh, here's another scene to uh, just to show you that insert simulation route and uh, it's done its best guess so here if you had say an if node in between this again if it's not the the emit node going directly inside here it's going to have a hard time trying to connect everything so this is really designed just to to really help some of the old scenes so that you can go in here and then uh, add uh, your own elements using this module menu 